So in the previous video, I promised to discuss the difference between a tensor library and an array library. It may sound a bit boring, but they are actually the same thing. And torch tensor is almost identical to numpy.array. The main difference though is that torch tensor supports GPU computation. And there's also the automatic differentiation support, which will become very useful when we train neural networks later. And you may also now wonder how are tensors and arrays different from regular Python lists? So if you worked with Python lists before, you know that the Python lists can store heterogeneous elements. For example, you can store floats, strings, and other objects mixed in a list. When you have a Python list, you can also easily remove or add items using .append or .pop. So while lists are very easy to use and flexible, Lists are very slow though when it comes to numerical computations, which is the main motivation behind using arrays or tensors. The limitation of using tensors though is that all the elements in the tensor have to be the same type, for example, float or integer. Yeah, and in contrast to lists, tensors also have a fixed size, so we can't easily add or remove items from a tensor. If we want to have a larger tensor, we have to create a new empty tensor with a larger size and copy over all the old elements and add the new elements to it. This sounds like tensors are actually pretty bad. However, tensors have certain advantages over lists, which are extremely useful for deep learning, which is heavily based on numerical computations. As we will see in the upcoming videos, tensors support a wide variety of different computations, and also tensors are much faster to use when it comes to numerical computations. Now that we've briefly introduced the advantages of tensors, let's actually see how we can use tensors in PyTorch in the next video.